Welcome to Michelle's Making. Hope you're ready for coffee, crafts, cookies, and cocktails. Let's get going. Welcome and welcome back to those of you who are returning. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for the thumbs up, sharing, subscribing, family and friends. It's helping the channel grow and I really do appreciate it. Today is National Punctuation Day, Brave Day. So let's be brave and do something new. Cherry Jubilee Day. Hmm, that sounds yummy too. Maybe we'll try that. But in the meanwhile, a little French vanilla in my coffee. Make it a great one and let's get going. Today we're going to make a delicious homestyle meatloaf. The complete recipe will be in the description box. We'll use ground beef and egg, tomato sauce, a package of onion soup, parsley, complete seasoning, bread crumbs or panko crumbs, cracker crumbs, something of that sort, and some half and half. Add your egg to the tomato sauce and a splash of half and half. Stir that up. Next, you're going to add a generous amount of the complete seasoning and parsley. Now, I didn't measure this. I just kind of do it till it looks well dispersed among the tomato sauce. You want a fair amount of seasoning, otherwise your meatloaf will have no taste to it. But put in a generous amount until you think you've got enough there and stir it well. You could add salt and pepper at this point as well, but sometimes I don't add salt to my recipes so that the person eating it can add salt to taste. I try to cut back on the salt a little bit because I think it's healthier, but you do what you feel is right for your family. Next, add your packet of dry onion soup and the breadcrumbs to your ground beef. You'll mix that well and here's where a lot of people just wash their hands and get in there with your fingers to mix it up. And I did that. I did use a glove though, because I tend to get everything under my fingernails and that's annoying to have to clean out afterwards. Once the dry ingredients are well dispersed in the ground beef, you'll add your tomato sauce mixture. Once this is all mixed well, and you can tell because it'll start to hold the ground beef together, you'll place it in your loaf pan and flatten it down. You want to try to get it evenly dispersed to the edges of the loaf pan. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a loaf that's got a mound shape in the middle. So I form mine very flat and smooth across the top, being sure to get everything into the corners and the sides. You'll bake this for about an hour and a half in an oven that has been preheated to 350 degrees. Keep an eye on it. If it starts to brown too much on the top, just cover the pan with aluminum foil while it continues cooking. And there you have a delicious home-style meatloaf. Our first craft is enhanced velvet pumpkins. This is so easy and quick to do. I encourage you when you're looking at things at Dollar Tree to consider what you might be able to do to it to enhance it and make it look a little more high end. For this, I began by taking some leaves that I had in my stash and trimmed them down so they were more appropriate for the size of the pumpkin. Next, I used some ribbon I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Again, it was 40% off. I made a simple loop bow holding it in the middle and then wrapping twine around it. Sometimes when you're making a bow, if you use a different ribbon or twine to tie off the center of it, it adds dimension to what might otherwise be a very simple looking bow. I didn't edit out this bow making because I wanted you to see how simple and easy it is to do. Mm -hmm. 
dovetailing your ribbon ends gives it a polished look. using hot glue, I glued on the leaves that I had trimmed down and put the bow in the middle. It doesn't get any easier than this, but it does give a little pizzazz to these otherwise very simple velvet pumpkins. For the second pumpkin, I glued the leaves on as well, and I made a simple shoestring style bow using this ribbon, again from Hobby Lobby at 40% off their fall decor. And I dovetailed the ends of the ribbon just to give it a little upscale look. So you can see here with very little time and effort, you can change an inexpensive decor piece from Dollar Tree into something that's just got a little more upscale type look to it. And there you have our enhanced velvet pumpkins. Our next craft is a thankful plaque. I made this using an old rusty saw blade I found in the shed. And I began by sanding off the rust, and at least the surface rust. It still had a long way to go, but it didn't matter because I was going to paint it anyway. I began by painting with this gray paint, and I thought that was going to be the one that I used for the plaque, but I decided it just blended in too much with the craft paper I was using, and I wanted it to pop a little bit. So I flipped the blade over and used this pumpkin colored paint. I thought this was gonna give it the pop of color that I was looking for. Next, I took the word thankful. Now I had gotten this in a pack of words from Hobby Lobby. I don't know if you remember, but I showed them in last week's episode where I used the grateful words. I gave the word a coating of black paint And you can see here against the blade, it's really going to pop. Next, using a pizza pan I picked up at Dollar Tree and a piece of craft paper that I had in my stash, which is still available at Hobby Lobby if you're interested in making this, I traced around the inside uh, portion of the pan on my craft paper. And it didn't have to be absolutely exact because you'll see I'll be covering up the edges of it. Next, I cut out the pattern so I had a circle of paper to fit in the center of my pan. Next, using my handy dandy spray adhesive, I absolutely love this product. It is perfect for paper and doesn't leave little bubbles and wrinkles in your paper. It, I, I just love it. Do you all have a craft product that you use that you just absolutely love and wouldn't do without, let me know in the comments. I'd really like to give it a try if I haven't already. Next, using a piece of the nautical rope I picked up at Dollar Tree, I glued it around the edge of the paper. Doing this covered up any of the imperfections in my cutting of the paper, and it also gave the piece a little more high-end look. The final step was gluing the saw blade. I used a combination of my Gorilla Glue and hot glue to adhere the blade to the middle of the pan. 
but that's it. That's all there is to it. What a great addition to my table decor. The final craft for today is an alpaca pumpkin. For this craft, I used a pumpkin form that I picked up at Dollar Tree and a piece of alpaca fur that my son brought me from Oklahoma. He, I don't know where he picked it up, but he brought it. And the first thing I thought when I saw it was, oh my gosh, that's the perfect color of pumpkin. What can I do with it? And then it came to mind. I had this pumpkin sign and I thought this will be perfect. So I did begin by taking off the tags and filling in the hole and adding some lightweight spackling, again from Dollar Tree, to the top of the stem to give it a little texture. And you saw there in the beginning, I made a little pattern of the inside pieces of the pumpkin because that's what I was going to use to cut out my alpaca fur. I'd actually never seen a piece of alpaca fur before, and I was amazed at how dense the fur was. So when I was cutting, I was actually had to work the scissors underneath the fur to just hit the, I guess, skin portion or the leather, leather portion of it. After cutting out the pieces, I did trim up the fur a little bit and again gave it a haircut later on when I glued it to the plaque and you'll see that in a moment. Before gluing the fur on, I used my pumpkin colored paint and painted in between the pieces of the pumpkin in the, I guess the spines of the pumpkin. I'm not sure really what that area is called, but painted those in and then also distressed or added some dimension using my antique wax. And I gave a fair amount of that antique wax to the stem portion at the top. I used my Gorilla Glue to glue the pieces of fur to the pumpkin. And then like I mentioned, I used my scissors and gave a little trim and a haircut to the pieces so that the inside spine or again, whatever you call that is um, going to show through a little bit. Final little trim up there of the hair. And the last step was just wrapping a piece of twine, jute twine around the top, tied it in a knot, and then I frayed the ends out. And there you have it, our alpaca pumpkin. Well, you know what time it is now? It's time for an adult beverage. And today I'm making a blue margarita. As always, recipes are in the description box. 
But for this cocktail, you'll use blue curacao, tequila, and the Jose Cuervo ready to drink margarita mix. Adding everything to your shaker. Now this drink is served over ice in a margarita glass. So there's no need to shake for chilling purposes, you're shaking for mixing purposes. Pour it into your margarita glass, garnish with a lime wheel, and enjoy a blue margarita. Well, folks, that's it for another week. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I really do appreciate that. Don't forget to take time to stop and smell the coffee. Make it a great week, and I'll see you next Friday.